What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to a new video. Today, Apex Legends Season 12 Defiance was released and of course, this is the accompanying optimization guide. Following along with this video, you'll get the best FPS possible for the brand new season of Apex Legends. Of course, as usual, in the description down below, you'll find not only Windows 10, but also 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides if you'd like to get even more FPS out of your computer. This video is specifically going to focus on Apex Legends, but we will lightly touch on some Windows settings. So with all of that out of the way, the first thing we should talk about is Windows 10 or Windows 11 for Apex Legends Season 12. Currently, there's no huge difference between the two, and you'll probably find whatever you're using you're most comfortable with, don't feel pressured to upgrade to the latest version. However, something you should definitely be doing is making sure not only your graphics card drivers, but also Windows itself is up to date. Hit start, type an update, and go through the normal Windows update process. Then for updating your graphics card driver, if you have a program such as NVIDIA GeForce Experience, you can use that to update. Otherwise, in the description down below, you'll find update links for both AMD and NVIDIA. When you're done with that, simply open up Steam, locate Apex Legends, right click, hover over Manage and click Browse Local Files. When this new window opens up, right click at the very top and click Copy Address. Then press Start, type in GPU and open Graphics Settings. Windows 11 is a look a little bit different. Make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling at the top is enabled and right under graphics performance preference, select desktop app and then click browse. In this new window over here, click anywhere in an empty space at the top, hit control V to paste and then enter. When you've done so, you'll see the R5 Apex.exe program here, double click in it and Apex Legends should be added to the list. Click options when you have it highlighted and then choose high performance, save and then we'll hit home in the top left. Then we'll be heading into the gaming tab. In the Xbox Game Bar tab, simply turn this off if you don't use any of the Xbox Game Bar features. Then Game Mode tab, make sure that this is enabled. And on the Captures tab, you used to be able to turn off Windows's Shadow Play like feature where it records your screen and gives you highlights. If you've installed the Xbox app or you've used the Xbox Game Bar, it's a good idea to make sure that this is disabled. To do so, hit Start and then type in Xbox. Open up the Xbox Game Bar. Then at the very top, click Settings and on the Capturing tab, simply make sure that Record in the background while I'm playing a game is turned off. When you're done with that, navigate back to the game's files. So right click the game, hover over manage and browse local files. Inside of the actual folder here, we'll be looking for r5apex.exe. Right click this, click properties and inside of here on the compatibility tab, simply make sure that disable full screen optimizations is unticked for better performance, then click change high DPI settings. On the screen over here, make sure that this is ticked and application is selected. Then OK and apply and OK. Then you can close out of this window here. If you're an NVIDIA user, right click your desktop and click NVIDIA control panel. Inside of the first tab, adjust image, make sure you have used the advanced 3D image settings ticked and then click take me there or manage 3D settings in the top left. In here, head across to the program settings tab and from the drop down, select Apex Legends. If you don't see it, click add. If you see Apex, select it and click Add, otherwise click Browse and once again navigate across to where the game is installed. I still have it copied, so I can paste, double click on it and it's added to the list. Then all you have to do is simply copy the settings on screen as close to these as you can. Of course, if you have more settings than I do, you'll need to use common sense. So here's the first page. Here's the second page. And here's the last page. Super simple. Other than that, there's nothing else we need to change here. You can close out of this. Now we'll get to cleaning up our drives just to make sure that we have extra space available. This is especially important if you only have one drive in your computer. Hit start and type in cleanup, then open disk cleanup as administrator. When it opens up, select C drive, the same one with Windows, click OK and wait for it to scan for leftover files on your computer. When it's done, you can simply select everything on this list and you should be saving a ton of space. Something I usually do is untick recycle bin to go through it later. And if you work with a lot of image files and you use the windows previews, simply untick thumbnails over here. Click OK when you're happy and delete files, then a bunch of temporary files and leftover files on your computer will be cleaned off. If you have another drive in your computer, simply open this up as admin once again and select those other drives going through each one, ticking options as you see fit. This way you'll clean up a ton of free space without having to do anything really. 
When it's done, hit start and type in power plan. We will be clicking on choose a power plan. Inside of here, simply choose AMD Ryzen High Performance if you have an AMD Ryzen processor, otherwise you can choose High Performance. If you'd like to try out something for extra performance, you'll find Ultimate Performance somewhere on this list. Of course, if you don't have Ultimate Performance, in the description down below you'll find a command you can copy. Hit Start, type in CMD and run it as Administrator. Inside of here, simply paste it in and hit Enter. When you do so, and you come back to Control Panel, Refresh, and you should see a brand new Ultimate Performance Power Plan that you can select. Do note that some of these do make big changes, especially if you're on a laptop, it'll definitely eat away at a lot of your battery power, compared to if you're running on Balance or Power Saver. When it's done, close out of this window. Finally, open up Steam, then Locate and right-click Apex Legends, then click Properties. Inside of the General tab, you'll see Launch Options. Simply make sure to remove everything you see here. Then from the description down below, copy and paste all of the launch arguments and paste them in here. You'll also find an optional argument called Threads that you can play with if you'd like to limit how many threads the game uses on your computer. By default, it uses all of your available threads or as many as it can. Something else you might want to try is head across to the local files tab and assuming you're not currently running an update, if you are, you'll need to wait for it to finish. It's a very good idea to move this game to the fastest drive in your computer. If you only have one drive, you don't need to worry about this. Otherwise, if you have more than one drive, you should be having this on your C drive or the fastest drive in your computer, preferably both if possible. Why? Well, Source Engine games sometimes perform quite a bit better if they're on the same drive as Windows itself. Otherwise, keeping it on a much faster drive will have a much bigger impact. When you're done, you can close this window and launch up the game. That's all of the tips in this quick video here for Windows. We're now going to dive into the in-game settings. Once again, if you'd like to get way more out of your computer, in the description down below, you'll find Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides that you can follow to get the most out of your computer. Before we even get to the main menu, it's a good idea to check if you're on the closest server to you. To do so, simply hit tab on the screen over here before you click to continue to the main menu. Here in South Africa, the closest servers we have are Bahrain, though they're usually quite deserted, otherwise we have to play London at 160 ping. After you've selected the closest server to you, or the best server for you, depending on population, click to continue to the main menu. On the main menu, click the settings wheel in the bottom right, then settings, and on the gameplay tab, we'll be scrolling it down until you see usage sharing. Turn this to disabled and performance display you should enable to see your FPS in game, though do note you can turn this off later. Then on the mouse and keyboard tab, simply make sure that mouse acceleration is disabled. The rest of the things here are user preference. Then at the very top, click video. First of all, display mode should always be full screen for the best FPS possible, though for some reason I've heard some people talking about better FPS in borderless windowed mode in specific games, so leave this to last to test while you're in game. It's super simple, especially with the overlay. Aspect ratio and resolution should match your monitor, though do note you can lower the resolution later for a huge boost in FPS, though it will make the game a lot blurrier the further below your native resolution you go. And the higher above it you go, if you have any options, the more frames you'll be losing for minimal gain. Brightness is user preference, same with field of view, even though this does technically affect FPS, you should definitely value gameplay over FPS in game. The other options here are user preference, though sprint view shake should be set to minimal for the best vision while running around. Under the advanced section, vSync should always be turned off, and NVIDIA Reflex should either be enabled or enabled plus boost, depending on your system. You'll need to come back and test this later on to see what works best for you. Usually enabled works better for me. This won't really improve your FPS, though it should improve system latency, meaning that there's less time between your mouse moving and you actually seeing it on screen. The adaptive resolution FPS target should be set to zero, otherwise if this is enabled at all, you'll notice pop-in and weird resolution changes that could make gameplay quite difficult. You can play with this after you've changed absolutely everything else here and you need more performance. Save it for very, very last. The anti-aliasing option should be disabled unless you absolutely hate jagged edges. That'll give you a bit more FPS. The texture streaming budget over here is how many textures can be stored in your graphics card VRAM. Usually you should have this as high as possible for your graphics card for the best performance in game. I have a 1080 Ti which has more than 8 gigs of RAM so I can crank it all the way up. You can lower this for minimal gain in performance, though on your PC it could be 
quite large. It really depends on your testing. If you're not sure how much VRAM you have, hit Control Shift and Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. And on the Performance tab, under your graphics card, you should see dedicated GPU memory here. I have 3.6 available of 11, and when I tap into game, it almost hits the top over here, which means I may want to lower this by a step, but I know mine's good at 8. The texture filtering over here shouldn't have an effect on performance and will give you better looking textures in game. You can turn this down, though it's usually quite snake oil. You can leave it at 4, 8 or 16. I'll leave it all the way up just for the best quality textures as I'm not extremely specific about FPS. The ambient occlusion quality over here should be disabled. Sun shadow coverage set to low, sun shadow detail low, spot shadow detail disabled, volumetric lighting disabled, dynamic spot shadows disabled, and that's all of the options that we'll be turning off. Model detail is something I definitely notice a difference on. Having this on low makes things load in a lot slower and look like you're playing a mobile game. I personally don't like that, so the lowest I'll go is a medium. The effects of detail over here you can comfortably crank down for better FPS in game, though this will usually be situational. If you find yourself losing tons of FPS in specific scenarios, this is something you want to mess around with. The impact marks over here is usually for gameplay advantage, though you can turn it off entirely if you have a less powerful CPU, as this shouldn't take away from your graphics power. I personally have this on. Finally, ragdolls at the very bottom you can turn to low, as you're not really interested in where bodies go after you're done with the person. That's about it for the settings here. Click apply, and we'll head across to the audio tab. In here, there's nothing really that we'll need to change, but I usually turn off music and lobby music, and I keep sound and background on in case I tab out of the game, I'll hear what's happening and be able to tab back in very quickly if I hear footsteps and things like that. The rest of these are all your preference. There's not much else we need to cover. To actually test your FPS, on the main menu, click the Game Modes button in the bottom left and choose the Firing Range, not Training, then click Ready. Even though it says it's searching, you'll be dropped into a solo game. Then simply run down, and you can immediately notice the FPS counter in the top left. I'm playing at 2K, so getting around 130 to 140 FPS is really good, especially because the game looks so good like this. I have some of the settings higher than anyone else might, but for me, sitting very close to 100 FPS is more than enough on my computer. You can crank the rest of the settings down as low as you'd like to go, but of course that's up to you and your preference. So anyways, there's not really much else in this video to cover, you've successfully optimized a little bit of Windows and your game. If you'd like to get much more out of your Windows install, make sure to check the description down below for the Windows 10, 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides that I've done, as well as other related Apex content if you're interested in anything. So, thank you all for watching, my name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!